Hello, everyone, and welcome to Designing a Successful Internship Program, hosted by our Career Center at the CFP Board. Today we have two presenters, myself, Dr. Lisa Andrews, I'm manager of the CFP Board Career Center, and we also have Shar Gugurchi, who is our manager of CE and experience here at the CFP Board. So today we're going to cover all aspects of internships. We're going to cover an overview of internships, including the benefits of internships to your organization, as well as target hires. We're going to look at steps to creating a successful internship, the CFP Board's experience requirement, which Char will cover, some legal and compliance issues you may not have thought about, and the CFP Board Career Center resources that you can make use of when you're designing your internship. So let's start with what is an internship? So an internship is a temporary position with an emphasis on on-the-job training rather than merely employment. And internships can be paid or unpaid, of course. So there are many benefits to hosting an intern at your organization, both internally and externally. And here are some of them. Interns may provide an avenue to identify and evaluate potential full-time hires. So you don't necessarily have to hire your intern after they've had the internship, but you can certainly use the internship as a great way to evaluate whether this person is a potential full-time hire. Student interns become ambassadors for your firm at their campus expanding your brand and recruitment opportunities. So it's a way for them to go back to campus and say, hey, I had a great experience at my company. You may want to do an internship there as well. And they're just spreading your brand all across campus. And interns will help build the pipeline of future CFP professionals by gaining relevant experience that can count toward the initial certification requirements. So, who should you hire? For academic internships, you should seek candidates who are already engaged in the initial education coursework for the CFP certification. And the reason for this is because when you, when you are um, utilizing students who are engaged in our education approved coursework, you're going to have students with a lot more, a, a greater knowledge base, and of course, they're not going to have all the knowledge needed to complete the internship tasks. That's part of your job is to teach them and train them. But they're going to come in with some initial knowledge that other interns probably wouldn't have from other majors. You should base your internship hiring decision on the academic background, skills, and values that are needed within your firm. So we're going to say this a lot, but you should really treat potential interns as full-time employees um, and hire them as you would hire a full-time employee, so considering their background, skills, and values, so that it's a best fit between you and the intern. So as I just said, select interns as if you were hiring a full-time employee. So that vetting process is really, really important during the inter interview process. So developing an internship, what is involved? Setting goals and creating a plan. And we'll go through these individually as well. Designing the program. Recruit. Onboard the intern. And finally, manage the intern. So what about setting goals and creating a plan? What does that involve? So the first and foremost, I think you need to think about what does your firm hope to achieve from the program, from the internship. So having an intern is, you know, um, an, added, um, an added value to your organization, and you want to see how that will contribute to your organization. So you want to make sure that you, um, that you look at what you hope to achieve from the program. It could be that you're a small firm searching for additional help on a project. Of course, you could also be a larger firm searching for additional help on a project. 
but especially our small firms want to consider interns to help you uh, get that project going. Or is your firm growing quickly and having difficulty recruiting motivated new employees? Interns can be a great way to bring new employees in and potentially make them full-time employees. And if you don't have the money to pay the intern, because it is optional, can you at least provide them with an interesting and rewarding learning experience, which would be payment in and of itself? Is your firm searching for new employees with management potential? So when you're, when you're employing an intern at your firm, you want to look at the kind of skills and abilities that they have and see them as potential management um, employees. Or are you looking to develop future CFP professionals, which of course is um, very necessary in our field, as we know many CFPs are retiring. And think about also what sort of academic background and experience do you want in an intern? And Char is going to touch on this a little bit in the future. So the next step is to really design the program. So what's involved in that? Carefully plan out and write out your internship program elements and goals. And these are something, um, things that you can use in order to write your job description when you're going to be posting your internship with us. Determine the compensation, if any. And this could be, you know, a stipend, but it could also be maybe um, covering an exam fee or um, other forms of compensation. Determine the physical assigned space for the intern. And of course, we want you to have physical assigned space for the intern. Uh, there's nothing worse than an intern showing up and you're saying, oh, well, we don't really know where to put you. We don't have a cubicle for you. We don't have a computer for you. You know, you want to make the intern feel welcome and feel a part of the organization. So of course, you want to designate some kind of physical space for them. Determine who will have primary supervisory and mentoring responsibility for the intern. Of course, this is another thing that you may not have thought of, but of course, you want someone to oversee the intern and supervise the intern and really mentor them. And it could be more than one person doing the mentoring, but um, you want to have one person who really supervises the intern and oversees all of their work. You want to determine how many hours will the intern work per week. In addition, what specific tax, tasks or projects will the intern be performing? And these could be, um, again, incorporated into your job description. So you can say, you know, you're going to be working on a certain plan or you're going to be working with certain staff members and that will indicate the kind of work that they're going to be doing. And then finally, will internships become an ongoing program? So if you've never had an intern before, once you've had an intern in your office, you may consider whether or not you're going to continue that program uh, in years to come. So the next step is, of course, to recruit. And we suggest getting out there early, so beginning to search for your intern three to four months before you want the intern to start. Because if you remember, interns are looking for internships at multiple businesses. So there is a little bit of competition out there to get your interns. So if you begin searching early, you'll get the uh, interns that are searching at, during that time frame. So really now is the time to start searching for your summer intern. And again, we mentioned this earlier, but it's really important to choose your interns as carefully as you would choose a full-time employee because you're going to be asking them to do things that are significant to your organization, and so if you're not careful about who you're choosing, you're not going to get the best work you can out of them. This is something you can consult your legal team about, and we're going to talk a little bit about this as well, but you should really learn the legal and compliance implications of hiring an intern. So next you want to onboard, once you've recruited and you've uh, hired the intern, you want to onboard and manage the intern. This 
this is really important to orient your intern to the firm. So again, bringing them into the fold, making them feel a part of your organization by orienting them. Provide your intern with the resources they need to, resources they need to do the job, including training. So along with providing them a physical space to work, you know, they need computers, they need um, office supplies, they need all of these things in order to do their job, but also they need training. So you can't just say, oh, welcome, here you go. Um, you really need to train the intern, and this would be the job of the supervisor. Be available for questions and identify a go-to contact person. Again, this could be the supervisor, but it could be someone else in throughout the firm. Give them lots of constructive feedback. Remember, consider that this is an extension of their academic life. And so in an academic life, you have exams. But in a work life, you have performance reviews and ongoing one-on-ones and that sort of thing. So it's important to give them that feedback as they're going along so they know that they're on track to learn from the learning objectives you've established for the internship. And evaluate their progress regularly. So again, this could be in a one-on-one -on -one situation on a weekly basis or on a quarterly, depending on uh, how long you're going to be employing the intern. And keep your focus on the future. Remember, this is part of their academic program um, and a learning opportunity for them. So what are some characteristics of successful internship programs? One is to offer interns real-world work assignments related to their academic preparedness. So, you know, all of us do administrative tasks in, as a part of our work. We're making copies or what have you. But you really want the focus of the internship to be real-world work assignments so that they're actually really learning something from the internship experience. Be there to welcome the intern on the first day. Just as you would for a regular employee, you want to make sure the, the intern feels welcome, meets their supervisor right away, and is welcomed. Supply the intern with the tools and training to get the job done. So this is a, one of the many characteristics of a successful internship program. Provide orientations for the intern and the supervisor. You may not think of providing an orientation for a supervisor, but really they may never have supervised an, inter an intern before, so you will need to really orient them to what their responsibilities are going to be when they're supervising their intern. Supply the interns with a guide or information online they can review in advance of their start date. So this may be an employee manual that you have for every other employee, or it could be information about your company online. It could be a variety of things to make sure that they are up to speed when they walk in the door on day one. If possible, find housing and provide relocation assistance if they're coming from out of state or out of town. Consider flex time or other work schedule arrangements. Some of them, if you're doing an internship during the academic year, they're going to be taking classes, so they're not going to be able to work a full 40-hour work week. So you may have to be flexible with their time and their work schedule. Some additional characteristics. And again, you know, provide a mentor or consider the option to assign an intern manager if you have several interns to oversee. So one intern manager can oversee several interns. Um, or you could have a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It depends on what you would prefer in your organization and what staff is available. Promote team involvement. So really include them in what's going on in the rest of the organization. So um, this is a way to make them feel a part of the organization and to know what it's like to be in a workplace setting. Provide interns with ongoing feedback. Remember, it's a learning environment away from campus. So again, on campus, they're, getting, they're having exams. They're getting feedback from their professors that way. This is also a learning environment. So you want to make sure you give them feedback and make sure they know where they stand. 
include interns in the daily life of the workplace. So if there are lunches or meetings or um, presentations, you know, make sure the interns are included on as many things as possible to really give them a good flavor for um, what goes on in your organization. Present training opportunities. So this is a way to give them additional um, assistance, additional information, and um, additional personal development. Highlight intern accomplishments through a presentation. So I think you should ask the intern to kind of give back to the organization um, by way of some kind of presentation where they highlight the things they have learned from the internship program or the progress they made on the tasks that you've given them. And when they're about to leave, perform exit interviews and evaluations so that you can improve the program for the next intern. So now Shar's going to talk about internship credit under uh, the CFP board's experience requirement. Great. Thank you, Lisa. And we thought it would be important, given the context of this presentation, talking about internship opportunities and the design of the job description and the fact that this would these uh, positions would show up on our Career Center to highlight how internships fit into the experience requirement for initial CFP certification. So just as a background, as most of you uh, are already aware, experience is one of the components of initial certification for CFP. Um, on top of the initial education requirement, the exam, and finally the ethics. So uh, we do allow internship credit under the experience requirement. On, um, most of the time, the internship credit is received under the three-year pathway. So under the three-year pathway, we have two categories of internships. Um, internships that are either completed through a CFP board approved registered program, and those registered programs are the um, organizations that offer the initial education coursework requirement, which is one of those initial E's for certification. So. If you have an intern that comes through a CFP board approved register program and they're taking that internship as part of their initial education, there's uh, a pre-approval process and existing engagement with that registered program. But most of the time, these internships that are going to uh, be in place with your organizations are going to be outside of that academic setting through a registered program. So it's certainly important to note how we approve experience credit for these types of internships that are outside the registered program. Um, so certainly we want to highlight these factors, and employers should be mindful of CFP Board's experience requirement when they're developing these internship opportunities and designing them, as Lisa mentioned. So the three-year experience requirement has two components, two criteria that have to be met. So when you're designing your internship, when you're thinking of the tasks and duties that the intern is going to be involved in, you, and their intent is to gain CFP board experience credit through their internship, certainly you want to make sure that you're setting them up for success so that they can earn as much credit as possible and start their pathway towards CFP certification and get a head start as far as gaining some experience while they're still completing their initial education uh, requirements. So the first part is the fact that the experience must fall within one or more of the six primary elements of the personal financial planning process. And those are the six steps that we should all be familiar with, but just a quick review of them. You know, they include the first step, establishing the relationship. The second step, gathering data. Thirdly, analyzing that data, developing the recommendation, presenting those recommendations, implementing the recommendation, and then finally monitoring the steps. So at least one of those six steps needs to be involved in order for the candidate, and in this case the intern, to receive experience credit under CFP Board's experience requirements. So if you have an intern and all they do all day long is analyze data, um, let's say for retirement income analysis purpose, or they're gathering data from the client, they're doing the intake, that certainly is acceptable under Part 1. Um, the second part is 
the delivery method. So it's a two-part requirement, so both of these factors need to be met. The second part really talks about how they're satisfying the requirement. Are they in the personal delivery to that individual client, that client-facing role where they're interacting directly with the client and uh, achieving those steps of the financial planning process in a personal delivery capacity. The other uh, delivery option, which is not going to be applicable for interns, is supervision, but we did want to highlight that. The most applicable pathway as far as the part two and the delivery method for interns is the support option. And this is routinely where we grant experience credit for internships where there are engaged in a support capacity involved in one or more steps of the financial planning process. So whether that's directly supporting the client planner relationship as far as helping to gather the data, analyze it, uh, present it, or even monitor the step or the uh, client planner engagement, there needs to be that support function in there. Finally, we wanted to also highlight some of the exclusions uh, that we take into consideration when we're reviewing experience. So whether it is an internship submission or a regular uh, type of experience submission, these are the exclusions that we look for in the job description to either reduce the amount of credit or to exclude that experience altogether from experience credit. So when you're designing these uh, internships, Again, be mindful of these exclusions under um, CFP Board's experience uh, standards. First is corporate finance. Obviously, that doesn't involve individual clients, so that is a um, pretty uh, straightforward exclusion there. Um, folks and candidates that are involved purely in training, you know, and this again shows up more on the traditional experience pathways where someone will be in a training capacity for about three months. Um, most interns, as Lisa mentioned, will have some kind of training uh, component to their uh, work, but it is limited. So just be mindful if all you're doing is training your intern, then the chances are that experience credit will be reduced. Folks that are involved purely in practice management aspects and those duties and uh, job responsibilities are directly and only including practice management, that is one of our exclusion and then marketing, software development, and purely administrative duties are also excluded. So if you are intending to have your intern just file paperwork all day long, you know, that, can, that is considered an administrative duty, and chances are there's not going to be any experience credit granted toward them. And likewise, if all they're doing is calling and setting appointments, those are, again, purely administrative duties. So we want to engage, we want to encourage organizations when they're developing these internships to have an, uh, a more engaged internship so that we can fill the pipeline of future CFP professionals and next-gen uh, advisors. Um, and again, this is going to be their first exposure to real-life work environments, so we want to make sure to not only give them the opportunity to gain as much experience credit as possible under CFP board requirements, but also engage them in the financial planning uh, profession as much as possible. So with that said, I'll go ahead and uh, turn things back over to Lisa and she'll continue the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Shark. So we're going to go through legal um, issues next. And of course, we encourage you to um, consult with your own legal team about issues related to having interns, whatever the um, parameters that might be in place in your firm uh, that may impact the way interns are um, utilized in your firm. But the U.S. Fair Labor Standards Act, Act does set forth guidelines for non-paid interns. So paid internships, uh, there are no standards really that are set forth by this uh, Fair Labor Standards Act, but for unpaid interns, it must meet these uh, criteria. So first, interns cannot displace regular employees. Next, interns are not guaranteed a job at the end of the internship, although you may decide to hire them, as we had mentioned earlier. Interns are not entitled to wages during the internship. Interns must receive training from your company. Interns must get hands-on experience with equipment and processes used in your industry. And interns training must primarily benefit them, not necessarily the company. 
some additional legal issues to consider. For example, workers and unemployment compensation. So workers' compensation boards have found that interns contribute enough to a company to make them employees. Therefore, it's wise to cover interns under your workers' comp policy, even though you aren't necessarily required to do so. It's just a good way to cover yourself as well as the intern. Now, student interns are generally not eligible for unemployment compensation when the internship ends. Finally, we're going to cover briefly the workplace environment. So if an intern is harassed at your organization and you don't do anything about it, your organization really opens itself up to the risk of complaints or lawsuits. So you should really take the time to advise your interns of appropriate workplace behavior and what's, what are the standards at your organization and the organization's harassment poly and policy and complaint procedure. And again, on any of these legal issues, we um, insist that you check with your own legal counsel to make sure that you're in compliance. So what are interns saying about internships? Let's find out. Number one, give us real work. So of course, as Char mentioned, you know, every one of us does some sort of you know, administrative duties, filing, and that sort of thing. But they really want real work. They want to learn something. Do what you say and say what you do. So be consistent with the intern. Um, you know, be honest with them about what their work capabilities are going to be and what they're going to be adding to the organization. We like feedback. So interns are saying they want to hear what's going on. They want to hear how they're doing, how they can improve, and what, what their learning opportunities are. We want to be included too. So remember I said, you know, really integrate them into the workplace if there are meetings or lunches or mixers or any press events or anything that are going on. They want to be a part of that. Please explain. So this really goes into training as well, um, you know, to make sure that they're um, given a lot of instruction about what it is the tasks are that they're going to be doing and the project they're going to be working on. Number six, I want a mentor. So it is important to really assign someone to the intern um, that's theirs alone, that they can go to, they can get information from, they can really make a relationship with that person and create a mentoring relationship. Number seven, a minute of your time, please. So the interns will probably have questions about what's going on. So if you can spare them that time, I know you're probably busy, but when you agree to take on an intern, um, you may have to spend some time with them um, explaining something. Eight, be prepared. So again, you know, this kind of goes back to welcoming the intern and having a space for the intern and um, just really being prepared and, and excited about their arrival. Um, I need a chair. <laughs> so this is something the interns are saying, you know, they really want a space of their own to work in. So it's really important that you treat them, again, as any other employee would be treated by giving them a space. And finally, Show me the money as best you can. So of course, interns would appreciate being paid. But if they can't be paid, perhaps there's other ways to compensate them. We want to highlight a couple of resources that the Career Center has to offer. One, of course, is our free 90-day internship listing. So between now and the end of December, all of your internship listings are completely free, and they run for 90 days. So it's a great way to um, start recruiting early for those summer interns. And we offer coaching on job descriptions, which can be really important to make sure that you're um, emphasizing the right things and, and you're in compliance with um, what we set forth. So if you have any questions, you can type them into the Q&A box, and we'd be happy to um, answer those. It looks like a couple uh, questions came in on the experience requirement. Um, Mike asks a great question. Are, is there a minimum number of hours per year to qualify for a year of experience? Absolutely. So the way that we quantify the experience requirement <clears throat> is 
uh, actually in an hourly calculation. So although it states three years, it's actually a 6,000 hour equivalency. And the reason we offer that equivalency and that alternative way to quantify the experience credit is because a lot of times we grant partial credit or folks are working in a part-time capacity. So for example, one year of experience equals 2,000 hours of relevant experience. So really you can think of it as a hourly total at 6,000 hours. So someone who's working 20 hours per week, that year, if you calculate it all out, will actually only equal 1,000 hours of experience. So that's the way that we use the calculation based on a 40 hour per week uh, maximum as far as applicable experience. So I hope that answers your question, Mike. And then we had another question from Jared on the experience requirement. So what if you're offering more of a back office role, uh, creating plans that advisors will present to the client, will that fall under the support category in part two? Absolutely, Jared. Although we can't grant experience credit approval ahead of time before someone starts a position, uh, we do offer guidance. And that type of scenario where someone is engaged in the analysis of a client's finances, helping to develop a solution or an illustration, even though it's in a back office capacity, will uh, be accepted and can be accepted under the support category. So one thing to keep in mind is that there does not have to be client-facing time in order to receive experience credit. And there hasn't been that requirement. Um, so the support capacity as far as direct support even falls under that category where you're directly supporting the financial advisor and their client advisor relationship. So I hope that answers your question, Jared. Um, I wanted to just give you, uh, some people are asking how to post and um, how to contact us. So I wanted to give you our contact information on this slide and let you know that in order to post, it's very simple. You just go to the Career Center a homepage, which is cfp.net slash career dash center, and you can um, post your internship by creating an employer account if you don't already have one, and then posting your internship from there. Um, in addition, the um, this presentation is being recorded, so um, we can definitely have the recording up on the website in the next week or so. So if you didn't get a chance to take notes or you want to review something, um, you can definitely see the presentation in the near future. Um, so again, we're going to be um, posting the webinar up on the website, so uh, you won't need to get a copy of the slide deck. Um, as far as job descriptions, I can definitely help you with that if you want to contact me individually. Um, there are some jobs that are already up there that are pretty good examples of internships, but I can definitely help you develop yours as well. And there's another question from Anthony um, having to do with recommendation on getting an intern license before hiring. Uh, really, it depends on the license, Anthony. Certain licenses, like securities licenses, require a broker-dealer relationship, as you know, before you can even sit for the exam. Insurance licenses. It depends on the specific state jurisdiction that you're in and what those requirements are. But with that said, there are opportunities for interns to get involved in the financial planning process um, and not necessarily be licensed. So just take a look at those options and how the intern can help the financial planning process, the client planner relationship, without necessarily being licensed. Um, so. Um. Shannon asks, what's the normal length of internships? Um, what do students want? Um, do you see summer only or a full semester or for one or more years? So it really depends on you um, and the needs of your organization. We generally see semester long or summer long internships, but some can get extended into the next academic year if they are a summer internship. I'll take this uh, question. From Charles, um, can I submit an internship to be an official registered internship by CFP board? So that's a great question, and it actually leads to another question that Michael submitted as far as uh, the most registered degree programs offer internships. So I'll go ahead and address both of those questions 
at the same time. Um, yes, we certainly would want as many registered programs as possible to have instituted as part of their coursework requirements official internships that are pre-approved uh, by CFP board and we are actually uh, in the process of engaging our registered programs to increase the number of these registered internships. Currently we have two main uh, registered programs that consistently offer these internship opportunities through their coursework requirements. So one thing I would recommend is engaging our um, business development team, our corporate relations team, because one thing that we've done over the past two years as part of our registered program conference is marrying the firms with the registered programs to help facilitate these types of opportunities and what we term um, the firm's night type of uh, arrangement. So with that said, you're going to get more information on that. And Charles, I would just urge you to take a look at the registered programs that are in your area and start engaging them to see if they have a registered, pro or a registered internship in place. And if they don't, certainly get them um, to pursue that option because we certainly want to see an increase in those numbers and we're going to have several initiatives targeting that aspect over the next year. How do you give credit for the time that they work? How do you track it or how do we help them track it? Great question, James. So the way that CFP Board reviews and grants experience credit is based on the candidate's own submission on an experience reporting form. And that submission is, in their own words, describing their activities and their duties in that role and how it relates to the requirement. And in this case, it would be the three-year requirement. So what I would recommend and what I've recommended to other candidates as they're starting a new position or about to um, take on a new uh, opportunity is to really have that conversation with the employer. What are the expectations? What are the details of the job description? And as you go through your uh, experience, you know, notate the type of work that you do. Notate the type of or the amount of time on average that you spend on applicable activities and take that into consideration certainly when you're submitting your experience reporting form. Um, so we don't need detailed spreadsheets, you know, uh, as far as how much time you took for <laughs> your lunch break and if you took a two-week vacation overseas. And believe me, we've received those types of uh, details in the past. But um, what we look for, again, on the experience reporting form is the average number of hours per week spent on applicable activities. And then what we also look at is the job description that's in the candidate's own words describing how their duties and their activities relate to that experience requirement. These are great questions. Yeah, they are very good questions. Um, how do you address the amount of time it takes to get familiar with an organization and a new job with the length of an average internship? This is a really good question. I think, you know, um, if you focus on sort of a project um, that the intern is going to work on um, and know that it's going to be a definitive length of time that that project is going to be completed in, um, you can kind of integrate, you know, aspects of the uh, organization along with that project. So um, they're not going to get familiarized with every part of your business, but in that initial training, they can become familiar with a lot of it and then enough that they'll be able to complete the projects um, that they're going to be completing. Another question comes in from Shannon. Uh, who asks, do you see internships through all levels of registered programs, i.e. bachelor's, master's, PhD? Is there a heavier weighting to any of those? Um, no, there is no uh, weighting as far as uh, which um, level that the internship is completed through, whether it's a bachelor's, master's, or PhD. And another aspect of this to take into consideration for everyone is that sometimes people take internships outside of an academic setting. And those are also reviewed for experience credits here at CFP Board. So um, most of the registered internships through our registered uh, programs are at the uh, bachelor level, but certainly the master's folks that are pursuing their master's uh, level or PhD can um, pursue internships and gain experience credits. So um, 
we are indifferent as far as how the internship is completed through the academic levels, um, but certainly the registered ones are at the bachelor level currently. And then there's another question from Betsy. Do, um, do the employers need to become approved internships ahead of time to qualify? No. Um, so as I mentioned, we have these registered internships through our registered programs, and then we have other types of internships. So those are the two categories. The other types of internships, we just review those uh, for experience credit, just like we would review any experience submission. So there is no need to pre-qualify your internships, but I would strongly suggest that you engage the Career Center, engage Lisa as you're developing the job description, especially if you're intending to have that candidate receive experience credit to make sure that the duties that you're inv uh, involving for that intern are going to be accepted um, and uh, gain credit for experience. When, uh, so Chris asks another great question, when can the calculation or the submission be submitted and approved for experience requirement? And that's a great question, Chris, and this is uh, guidance that we give to candidates routinely. We say, hey, submit any experience that you have so that you have assurance that it's going to count towards the requirement, even though it might not be enough to meet the 6,000 or three-year requirement fully. However, you, you do need to be in that position in order to submit something to us because you, know, you need to actually be doing the activity. So with that said, we encourage candidates to submit their experience to us as soon as possible. There is no requirement on when they need to submit it to us, but they certainly have the opportunity to submit that even though it's not enough to meet the requirement. And what we would do is we would review it and then we would send them a balance due notice. So for example, if someone who is engaged in an internship uh, that's a three-month internship. One month into it, they submit that record to us and they say, these are the activities that I'm involved in. I'm working for XYZ uh, firm down the street as an intern. And then we would say, yes, you've received one month of experience credit and you have a balance due of you know, 35 months. Um, so that way they have an assurance that what they're doing is definitely going to count because they've submitted that, they've gotten that vetted through CFP board, so we certainly encourage the submission of experience credit as soon as possible. So how many interns, Matthew asks, are coming to the CFP board to look for internships, and how are you spreading the word about this new job board to get candidates? So we're working really, really closely with our registered programs to get the word out about um, the CFP board's career center, and we have over 5,000 uh, job candidates registered right now. So um, a good percentage of those are going to be from the registered programs and looking for interns, internships. Okay, and Stephanie asks, do you have any examples of good financial planning related projects that could be time fillers when the projects aren't available? Um, and really, Stephanie, this depends on your specific firm you know, the size of it, the business model that you guys are uh, are at. So um, why don't we connect off a line on that, and I'll follow up with you on some, some suggestions there. And again, it will be based on what type of uh, business model you guys have in place. In general, what percent of, of paid internships versus unpaid internships do you see? What's a fair wage for a paid internship? Um, I would say, Honestly, the majority of internships are unpaid, um, but as far as the fair wage goes, I think this kind of goes along with your organization. I would say at the, at the minimum, a minimum wage, but some people pay a little bit more than that to attract um, interns, so it just really depends on your firm and, and what, um, what your requirements would be as far as wages go. And then Chris asks, at what point does an intern become an employee that would require a minimum wage payment of compensation? I think this is something you should take up with your uh, legal counsel um, to be sure that you're you know, complying with um, employment law that they may know um, a lot more about. Uh, Sherry asks, we have a hard time motivating current advisors to spend time with our interns. Any thoughts on how to rectify that? Um, that's a really good question. Um, 
I think, uh, you know, if you can just find one advisor that can uh, supervise an intern, um, that would be a great way to, um, to get them to, uh, you know, communicate with the intern and get involved with the internship program. In addition, if, if there's some kind of payoff for the advisor, um, so they're working on a specific project or um, they need extra help with something, um, so if there's a payoff that you can see for them, that will probably motivate them to be a little bit more involved um, with, the, uh, with the intern. So Rebecca asked, would you recommend interns going through the registered paraplanner program? Um, so there are a couple paraplanner courses offered through our registered programs. Um, that offer the initial education requirement for CFP certification. Although we don't have a strong recommendation, you know, that is a great way to further engage your intern. Um, most of the interns that will be coming to the Career Center will already have an interest, in my opinion, in CFP certification. So I think the registered paraplanner course can be a great supplement to that. But um, just be mindful that Sometimes there isn't a crossover as far as the credit for the education, but yes, the registered paraplanner program is a great way to start someone engaging in the financial planning uh, profession and can really help to uh, build a foundation as far as the knowledge for CFP certification. All right, and then Jeff asks, any thoughts on the balance between what will be considered administrative and higher level tasks. So he gives some examples of administrative duties like scanning, making copies, data entry uh, versus uh, you know analysis, investment analysis, product analysis. And so again, that is really dependent on your uh, you know the scope that you want to put in place for this intern and that intern themselves. You know what is their capacity, and this is, a lot of this will show up in the hiring process and the development and design of the internship itself and the needs of your practice. So if you need someone to just be doing scanning and making copies or filing paperwork, then that intern um, you'll want to certainly disclose that up front and let them know. If they're seeking experience credit, that that would be an exclusion. And then really the hope would be to have that intern be involved in the higher level tasks, um, even in a support capacity. Again, they don't have to be the lead person developing the plan. They can help support that process by doing some rudimentary analysis or fact finding and things like that. So I think it is a it is a case-by-case uh, -case basis, uh, Jeff, as far as what the needs of the organization and firm and then the capacity of that intern as far as their wherewithal. Now, the folks that are going to be engaged in the CFP uh, certification process that are going to want and desire that experience credit, in my opinion, are going to be in a better position to take on those higher-level tasks, and they're going to desire those types of uh, um, responsibilities. So at what point in the academic program are internships usually held? Um, that's a really good question. If it be any time, I would say after the sophomore year. Typically, um, it is at, during the junior year or between the junior year and the senior year uh, summertime. Um, because at that point, they have you know a lot of knowledge that they've gained from their coursework. Um, and, and they'll have a lot, lot more to contribute than they would as certainly a freshman or even a sophomore would have to contribute. Alvin asks a good question. If the intern's responsibility is mainly writing educational material related to financial planning, you know, like student loan topics, retirement, and the like, um, that will be distributed to prospects or clients, will that count under the experience requirement? So Alvin, again, we can't give pre-approval, uh, you know, before a position starts or it's in place, but um, the new indirect support category of the experience requirement does allow those types of activities to be approved. So um, we can you know, discuss that specific function 
in more detail if you have any follow-up questions, Alvin, but there is an opportunity for you know, the, the uh, authorship of material that will then be utilized by the client and the planner to be acceptable under the new indirect support category that was launched this year. And then Adrian asks, how do we get a list of registered programs in our local area? That's a great question. So we do have a list of all of the uh, registered programs that offer the initial education coursework requirement, and that list is available directly on our website. I believe the link is cft.net slash education. Um, so certainly jump on our website, and you'll have a search function to you know, uh, refine the registered programs that are in your local area so that you can start engaging them in that conversation. So our final question is, do most students prefer during the semester work or summer work? And I would say, you know, it really depends on their schedule and their extracurricular activities and, you know, what they have going on so that they could dedicate a good amount of time to the internship. So I would guess that they'd probably prefer summer when nothing else is going on and they can dedicate as much time as possible to the internship uh, during the summer. So thank you all so much for um, joining the webinar today on internships. And Shar and I both welcome your questions after the webinar. So you have our email addresses and um, contact information and, of course, our website addresses for more information as well. So um, please feel free to reach out to us. We definitely want to work with you on um, designing your internships uh, and making sure that they're the highest quality experience for your students. So thanks again for joining today.